they're having for dinner tonight, and it's none of their it's none of their business. None of their business. Well, I hear you, and I'm just over here on my computer watching the video of the raid. We're going to come back and talk to Ms. Diaz. Uh, Lindy, straight ahead, get her take on this. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. I was trained in firearms, I carried a concealed weapon, I made the determination that if somebody was going to try to take me out, I was going to take them with me. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. It's Alex Jones. Our problem is we're not radical enough. We haven't turned up our rhetoric to meet the enemy threat. I've studied history. It's incredibly compelling, incredibly engrossing. It's amazing how action-packed it is compared to Hollywood. To fiction. Most governments end up taking over, enslaving everyone and mass murdering and taking the general public's daughters and making them become prostitutes for the state. Germany now officially does that. Oh, you don't get welfare. You got to go out and hook. And, and my point is, is that it's about control. The state wants to decide who can be in commercials, who can publish books, who can be successful, what the styles are going to be. It is control freaks. The opposite of those that love individualism. 
Again, I don't like marijuana. I think it's a bad culture. A bunch of stoners ruining their lives. But you know what? You got a right to do it. I'm for total decriminalization. And guns. Yeah, there's some bad people with guns. But statistically, it's 70 plus times. I was saying 40 something. That was an old number. That guns are used to stop crime for when they're used in crime. Crime's down by 51% using firearms. Those are Justice Department numbers, but boy, they sure just don't want to promote them, do they? They want to brainwash the public that gun crime is at an all-time record. As Eric Holder said, and as the L.A. Times even admitted, gun crime plunges as public perceives epidemic. Maybe the public that believes mainstream media. But I've never heard anybody with a firearm. I've never shot anybody with a firearm. And I've grown up since age four firing firearms. That's how you start out. You start out sitting in grandpa's lap with a 410 and you shoot a coffee can to show you how dangerous it is. And then you're told, you don't touch this, it's dangerous. Every household in this country back 60, 70, 80 years ago, even just 20 years ago in many areas, the guns weren't locked up, folks. Because people knew you don't touch them. Until the kid's about three or four, maybe you got them in a glass case and lock it. But you don't touch those guns. By the time you're six years old, you can shoot dove out of the air, shoot quail in the brush. When my dad was a kid, they were shooting deer by the time they were six. I didn't shoot a deer until I was nine. Trying to reverse that trend. My son's now alligators, deer, you name it. That's normal. I mean, they arrest development, ladies and gentlemen. People were men by the time they were 14, 15 before. Now you're not a man until you're 25, they say. This, this is the takeover to make you domesticated. It's the war on men that ties into the war on women that is taking place and going on. Now, I want to give you guys the floor and shut up. CEO Demetrius Karras and Lindy Diaz, his assistant uh, there at um, Aries Armor. Describe what you guys sell, what you were doing. It looks like a nice place you had. Describe how long you've been in business, what happened, where this is going. And I'd like to hear from Lindy about what it was like. I saw photos of you guys offering them donuts. I mean, they first come in with their guns up, pointed right at you aggressively uh, in, in commando outfits. I mean, obviously, they could look at you through binoculars or look the, the, in the parking lot and see you're not lying and wait for them. I mean, these are people that absolutely are cowards. But I guess most scum are cowards. Go ahead. Absolutely. And uh, I do want to get to, uh, to, to to let Lindy get her perspective in on this because I, uh, she was sitting there with me waiting for this to happen. And uh, the conversations that we had and the, you know, the feelings that we had were, were I, I think, definitely something that should get out there. But I'll give a, a real quick synopsis of the company. Um, we've been in business about four years. Uh, we actually started out. Um, doing tactical nylon products, which is your chest rigs, backpacks, slings, uh, things of that nature that are mostly uh, marketed towards uh, the military and law enforcement, um, <laughs> amusingly enough. And, uh, you know, through that, we've expanded into other product lines. We do a lot through the uh, the rifle parts now, and the 80% line is, is kind of where we've made our mark over the last recent, uh, recent years. Um, and you sell your firearms to general slaves. <laughs> we do not distinguish. There's not one product that we will sell to the government that we will not sell to the American so, people. So, 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 yeah, okay, so you do sell stuff to the enemy. Well, that's why they're mad at you. Please continue. <laughs> Absolutely. This is one of those things. These these eighty percent products. It's a way for the uh, average American to get into gun ownership without the government intruding into their daily lives. The entire idea behind this is you can sit at home and you can you know go out to your garage and you can build yourself a rifle and this is legally allowed for you to do this and it's a, a way for you to. And to, they to have said that. they have said they want to register to confiscate Feinstein all of them Bloomberg more. That's their plan. So people should get around their criminal design and build their own firearms. Well, I'm sure that Senator Feinstein loves us, especially after we registered the, doma the domain name, SenatorFeinstein.com. I'm sure she's a huge fan of our work. Uh, <laughs> but I, I would really like to actually get Lindy's take on, um, you know, what was happening. When we got the... Uh, the notice that the judge had changed the TRO, it was pretty much, yeah, they're, they're probably coming in right now. 
And so on Friday, we uh, we sent all the employees home, and it was just me and Lindy waiting down there for them to to, to come in. And so I think uh, it'd be really nice to hear from her exactly like what that. Experience yeah, tell us what it was like to face the paramilitary forces of the gun confiscation squads. Well, I, I was ready. I have to say I'm one of the 3% that will stand up. So actually, I think we were ready to get shot. And we were thinking about, we both have children, and we were kind of thinking of what we would want our children to think of us if this had happened, and them to follow on in our footsteps or keep fighting for what we believe in. So, like, I mean, as we sat there, we kept going on, like, you know, we're doing this for the people who won't stand up. We are the people who will stand up. And that's kind of what it was. It's, we were showing we aren't giving in. We're not going in unless it's in cuffs or in a bag. That's pretty much what it is. Well, there's the headline. California gun confiscation bill passes approval. $24 million to expedite illegal gun seizure. And that's whatever guns they want, including people with tattoos of guns, are now being SWAT teamed. Just the image of a gun is a SWAT teamable offense. That's sad to think that that's what we're coming to. I mean, anybody can have a tattoo of anything. And what, if I have a, I don't know, a tattoo of random stuff, they, they it shouldn't be by what I'm, the perception of me shouldn't be, oh, she's a gun owner because she has tattoos. Um, he's a gun owner because he dresses down. A lot of our customers are well-dressed people. You would never know they go out on the ranges on weekends to go shooting for fun. I mean, it's not. It's not like we're stockpiling. Sure, guns. sure. Well, listen, guys, I want to have you back up on the nightly news sometime when, you, when you're in a place that doesn't have so much background noise. But briefly, any other points you want to make about the raid and where you're going from here? Are they going to be able to shut you down? When do you get your, your stolen stuff back uh, from, the, uh, from the pirates? With that said, I can't uh, comment on our legal strategy going forward. Uh, we have uh, retained a very prominent law firm, and we are very confident in, uh, in our abilities to overcome. Um, with that being said, the, the, the raid that was executed against us was, it was completely, there, there was no reason for it. I had actually shown ATF agents exactly where the product was that was in question. We had separated it, put it into a separate room. I had a camera pointing towards that room. I offered to give them access to that camera system so that they would be comfortable in knowing that we were not going to divest ourselves of the product. Um, I also switched the locks out on that door. There was only two keys in existence, and I offered to hand the ATF agents those two keys so that they would be 100% assured that we did want this handled through the courts. Um, and this is just, it's, it's one of those situations where it's uh, them going around the procedure. It's not them going around the procedures. It's them using the procedures and playing the game in order to keep something that is obviously wrong out of the out of the judicial system where it already was. There was no reason for any of this to happen. And for them to say to us that, uh, and one of the agents actually did say this to me, uh, one of the biggest reasons that we got raided across the board on all of our facilities instead of just where the product that they were looking for was, which they knew where it was, um, was because of how how mouthy we are and how much we're on uh, you know we're, we're, we we kind of embarrass them. Is That'll there. be very useful in court to show that they said it was for your First Amendment. So a major civil rights violation uh, by this anti-American organization that needs to be abolished. And I can tell you this, uh, getting told that that we embarrassed them and that's the reason that they did this, that did nothing but only embolden us to uh, to go further and actually spread the word about this even more. They should be embarrassed for what they did. What they did is wrong. They know what they did is wrong and they should absolutely be embarrassed for it. And that's why their entire organization is a joke and we're making a joke out of their organization. If you check on our... Uh, our, our uh, Facebook page and other things like that, we have made a complete mockery out of what they have done. I don't think they've ever raided anybody before and had the, the, the target of their raid laugh in their face. So I think, and that's something that needs to happen. These people need to learn that they're a freaking joke. They are a joke 100%, and that's what they need to be made into. No, that's right. We need to stop being afraid. It's like, you better not talk bad about the corrupt agencies while they'll come get you. Well, I mean, they're criminals. I've got my free speech. They shipped tens of thousands of guns into Mexico. CBS News got the memos to blame the Second Amendment. Well, we knew that was obvious. The Attorney General did the criminal operation. I've got one for you, Alex. So they actually contacted us not too long ago and said that they were upset about the pictures we released from our surveillance system because of the officer's privacy. Well, I'd like to ask them this. You didn't care too much about the privacy of all of our customers, so why should we take those pictures down? Why should we? Plus, you can't even see the, the, the face. It's not like we put out their names or their addresses like what you stole from us. 
No, it's just a picture of them uh, clearly coming through our building wearing a helmet like they're going through Ramadi, treating with women and children inside of the building, treating it like it's a combat zone. You're in the United States. You have no. Look at that woman. I, I got to say, so. look at that one woman there, like strutting around. St st I mean, if a guy was standing in that, that stance.